Hey, what's going on folks? Welcome back to another super inconsistent upload schedule. Today we're going to be looking at carboxylic acids. So the next couple of videos are essentially going to be looking at carboxylic acids. What are they? How do we synthesize them? And once we synthesize them, what the hell can we do with them? Okay, because they're important functional groups when it comes to syntheses, uh, as we'll see in organic tube. So the first one here is we're looking at converting a carboxylic acid, in this case it's benzoic acid, to an acid halide, in this case an acid chloride, or benzoyl chloride. And what we want to do is we're using the reagent SOCl2, or thionyl chloride. Thionyl chloride. Awesome. So this mechanism begins by our carboxylic acid. Remember the OH on the carboxylic acid is going to have a lone pair of electrons. These lone pairs of electrons are going to attack or go towards this sulfur on the thionyl chloride, our reagent. Once they do that, you're going to form this product over here. But before that, once you attack the sulfur, you're going to break the, C, uh, the S double bond O, so the double bond between the sulfur and the oxygen, and these electrons will collapse towards the oxygen, forming our O minus in this next thing. So let's draw everything together. We end up with this structure. The only thing that's really changing is we've formed a bond between this oxygen and this sulfur, and we've broken a bond between this sulfur and this oxygen. So let's look at that. We know that when oxygen has three bonds, it's going to have a charge of plus, which we've done here. We know that we've broken a double, we've broken a bond, so the electrons have collapsed from this sulfur to this oxygen, so from this bond, rather, to the oxygen, forming our O minus. Overall, plus minus, zero. So in terms of charges, we're very happy. Now, the next step that's going to happen is you're going to have the oxygen donate these electrons, rebuilding the double bond. It'll donate these electrons, rebuilding that double bond. And what's going to happen next is you're going to kick out one of these chlorine atoms. You can kick out this one, you can kick out this one, entirely up to you. You end up with the same uh, uh, final product. What that does is that kicks out a Cl minus. So now we have Cl minus in solution, right there. We have our S double one O that we just built here. Okay, perfect. Now what this Cl this Cl minus is going to do, it's going to come in and attack this electrophilic carbon, this carbonyl right here that was originally part of the carboxylic acid. So we can add the arrow. I think it's better if I just move this way so you can actually see what's happening. Cl minus is going to boom, attack here. This chlorine atom will essentially now go in and attack this carbonyl, okay, this electrophilic carbonyl that was originally part of our carboxylic acid. Perfect. When that happens, we know that carbon can only have a maximum of four bonds. If you have five, you got a hellfire. So in this case, if we do have the chlorine attack, one of these bonds is going to break. The most susceptible bond that is going to break is going to be this bond. So this bond is going to break. And we get our final product. And our final product is what? It is a benzoyl chloride in this case. Or more generally, we can convert carboxylic acids into acid chlorides using thionyl chloride as our reagent. Now, just a minor side note. Um, in terms of what the hell happens with this group over here. So this group over here is going to break down from, I'm not sure if this registers well on camera, but it's going to break down from this product to form HCl and SO2 gas that is essentially evaporates or, or uh, is released uh, in when you run the reaction. So this is sort of a side note, and in organic chemistry we don't really care about the side reactions because we're only interested in the major organic product. That's this reaction, very simple, very straightforward, just a few steps. If you're curious as to how and why I knew these things essentially proceeded in the way they did, why is it that the Cl here is the one that attacks this carbonyl? Why doesn't it attack this sulfur? Why doesn't it attack this hydrogen? Uh, I have a video that essentially, sorry, the best ways to study mechanisms in organic chemistry. I think it's the video before this video. So take a look, like, comment, subscribe. Actually dislike it if you really did hate the video. The more dislikes, the better. Uh, peace out. Hope you have a great day.